As you already know, everything is a choice and by that we mean you have already understood your mission and therefore are responsible for the consequences that come. As a soul you are free and you are then given the opportunity to incarnate or not according to the lessons you wish to encounter. There is no necessity to incarnate or obligation. It is your free will to do so. Many reincarnate because they want to learn a particular facet of the human existence and continually come back to learn from what they have chosen to become. Because the soul is a free entity, its purpose upon existence is to advance to the highest possible level, to the unconditional, ever-knowing love of being. When the soul decides to take on an incarnation, it already has advanced knowledge of the lessons to be encountered upon that lifetime. It chooses the body in which it will incarnate, the one that is the most appropriate body for that lifetime. It already has chosen the parents and therefore there is a deep connection from previous karmic lives together. There are no chances in what is learnt through the incarnation process. It is also one of the most difficult journeys for the soul and is a great sacrifice for the soul to take. For it can be free and live in the ethers if it wants to. But because the soul also has a yearning to learn and grow, it chooses to incarnate and be of use not only to itself but to others in the process. For once it incarnates in that particular form, it also implicates the lives of others in that process. And although every moment is known, it cannot be controlled, for free will abides within each and every one. Having said that things do happen because one is meant to understand the process of what one has set in motion. For example, if a soul wants to incarnate and understand what it's like to be a prisoner, it will set up circumstances to be caught and then processed as a prisoner. If that soul wants to understand what it's like to have riches and be pampered, it will choose the correct environment, parents and circumstances that will guide the soul's understanding and experiences of such. This is why it is difficult for many of the humankind to be forgiving and understanding, for they all inherently and unconsciously have on a soul level chosen these purposes, but once incarnated they cannot remember what they have previously come to do because the journey is one of exploration and of unknowingness. Although the soul creates its own circumstances, it does not do so consciously for the earthling to remember. This would create great pain that one would know one's circumstances. The only way to experience this is to go in knowingly but to not remember. It is the earthling's experience to have pain in some form for it is the human condition. And although one has already chosen one's particular path and lesson, it is difficult for the human not to criticize and judge for that comes with the ego. The ego's purpose is to create fear within the self. and It is the soul's purpose to overcome fear and to know and remember its original process and why it has come to incarnate in that particular life form. The karmic debt, as it is, is the leading up of events of what has been chosen. So if a soul has chosen to reincarnate, it already has then the lessons within itself of any karmic debts to repay or karmic rewards to reap. And in order for the soul to do this, 
it must remain neutral in its condition. As previously stated, the soul does not need to incarnate if it does not want to, even though there may be karmic debts. There is also the ability to return karmic debts by way of helping from the other realms. It is not necessary to incarnate to do this. However, the soul that does particularly want to incarnate shows great sacrifice by coming back into a body. It is also the state of the soul's wisdom which pertains to its particular awareness on the earth plane. For example, those who continue to perpetrate lower based instincts are not of an advanced wisdom or knowledge but have come as young souls to experience life in the incarnated form. Their purpose is to create for themselves the experience of what it is like to be, for example, of a violent and treacherous nature. Having said that, one should not judge, for it is only a choice the soul has made. If all of humanity understood this, there would be less violence and less war. Although it would also create within the soul's chosen path to be violent a reaction that if that was the choice, it then has begun to change its awareness and outcomes. This is also possible, for although a soul has already chosen a path, it can with great insight and awareness become more knowledgeable of its purpose and change its condition here and therein comes free will. Most of the inhabitants of planet Earth are unaware of their purposes and continue to live their lives as a daily routine. But as your consciousnesses become more aware and with the help of those who are spiritually awakened and have seen what the truth is, the state of the world becomes more conscious and available to those who choose to follow their purposes. So the soul can then choose to be in truth with itself or continue to conceal its truth by acting out of the ego state, which is a, has a great effect upon mankind. It is wonderful that many are becoming more advanced and awakened to their soul's purpose and that of consciousness. There are many lights as we see them from our position and we rejoice with the lighting up of souls that have understood their incarnation and purpose. Some of you are still in between and not knowing and falter in the choice of where you are to be. Much of the confusion on the earthly plane is plagued by the different religious moral and political interferences. If more were to abide within themselves and understood their truth, then more would light up their souls and peace would be abundant upon the earth. Animals do reincarnate, but within the animal kingdom and their own species. They do not possess qualities that are the same as yours. However, they are in service to humankind, for they bring much pleasure and comfort to those who love animals. In particular, they raise the vibration of companionship and nurturing in the human form. Animals are in service, and this they know, for they also too receive by giving. They give by being what they are, the companions of those humans which are sometimes caught up in not being able to open up. For some of you find it much easier to relate to an animal than to a human. This is a way in which the animal can become an example of how it is to relate to someone else. Many of you feel unable to integrate with other human beings because of the dense vibration and aura around some of the human forms. Whereas animals become more tangible and able to interact quickly with the human form. Most animals that have been domesticated 
are becoming more and more like humans. They are taking on some of the humans' anxieties and some of their ills. This is happening quite a lot. As the vibration of the human soul becomes more advanced, the animals become like sponges and soak in the atmosphere or vibration of the energy in which they live. This can sometimes lead to the animal having difficulty in some form or another. The animal then becomes like another human and reacts to different situations according to the way a human could react. Because they are in service to humans, they are a gift and must be treated with respect, joy and absolute love. For they also understand and feel love like any other spiritual form. In fact, animals will be more attracted to those who have a greater understanding and love for themselves and for them. Animals feel very much the presence of those around them. They are more sensitive than humans. Therefore they seek humans who can interact with them without being too immersed in human day-to-day -day activities. Unfortunately, some animals will still become involved with humans in a negative way as it is their purpose to take on some of the human's karma and live out that particular illness or energy that the human is going through. <laughs>